I wanted to talk a little bit with Jeff about some compost tea. I know that it's a very controversial subject. Keto Life does sell a cyclone brewer, and that's actually the root of the company. Very nice. I don't know if I told you yes, that, yes, Jeff. Yes, you started with it. Started yeah. with the cyclone brewer in my driveway very up in nice. Breckenridge, Colorado. Nice, and nice, nice, nice. Started selling tea brewers to people. And Good. before too long of selling people nutrients one cup at a time in Ziploc bags, uh, we kind of thought that it might be best to drop a whole nutrient line with it. So, what, what's your what's your view on compost tea? I know one of the biggest areas of controversy there is in this water vessel you brew a particular species and population of microbes, and then it goes into the soil and p potentially it might not be those same right. species right. of microbes that right. are active in the soil. What's your what's your take there? Okay, here's my take, and I don't know if it's the right take, but it's my take. Um, you know, those uh, th that can survive in the soil will survive in the soil. The other ones become food for those that are already in the soil. And so the nutrients that you put into your compost tea along with the growing bacteria and fungi that, that you get out of the compost tea uh, will feed existing microbiology in your soil. So, so even if you're not brewing the right microbes, you know you've got aerobic microbes so that they're healthy microbes and they're not going to be doing bad things to your, to, to your plants, to your soil, and to your own health. Uh, you, you know you're at least feeding the population of microbiology that's in the soil already. So, uh, but on the other hand, if you make your tea properly at the right temperature with the right inputs and the right quality compost, I don't think there's any question that what you're putting down uh, is used by the plant. And, and so that's that's the trick. The trick is to make great compost tea. Uh, it's got to really be made right with the right kind of brewers. It's got to have absolute aerobic, uh, you know, properties the whole time. And uh, you got to be careful about the nutrients that you put into it. What goes into that compost tea gets multiplied and held by the bodies of those, you know, microbes. And if you put the wrong stuff in, you're going to have a bad tea. If you put in, for example, too much molasses you'll end up with only bacteria because mm -hmm. they'll go crazy. They'll eat everything. They'll outcompete everything else that's in there. So you got to be careful about what you're doing and how you do it. You got to pay attention to people like, like Dr. Elaine Ingham, who's always adjusting the system a little bit. Um, and, and you got to just keep at it. That's awesome. So basically what you're telling everybody is these microbes that get put back into the soil whether they're alive and benefiting the plant or not, they're just going to be eaten by the other bacteria, right. turned into fertilizer anyway. Exactly right. It's an eat be eaten world down there, and if something goes into the soil that shouldn't be there, generally it gets eaten by something that, that <laughs> you know will consume it and be very happy and, and grow. And so uh, you know, even putting in it's it's, it's it's sort of like compost. I mean, you put that compost down. Do you know whether the microbes in that compost are the same microbes that are down there at the bottom of the rhizosphere? They should be. They could be. Maybe they're not, though. But that compost has got all sorts of stuff in it that is feeding the soil food web that ultimately will feed the plant. And so when you use compost tea, obviously you're doing the same thing. Um, I, again, I think people use a little bit too much uh, nutrients sometimes. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with making a compost extract. Uh, you could put that in your machine for 15 or 20 minutes instead of doing it for, you know, 24, 48 hours. Um, and and uh, even though you're not multiplying it, at least you're getting, you're pulling the stuff out. Right. <clears throat> but yeah, these microbes in the tea, if they're not feeding the plant, they're feeding other microbes. That's and great. the nutrients that you put in to make them better is also doing the same thing. It's very interesting. So the other thing too that a lot of people talk about with compost tea is that bacterial versus fungal. Right. Because, I mean, we've talked about it before. There's not a whole lot of opportunity to be able to grow a mycorrhizal colony right. inside of a compost tea. Right. So what we tell our growers is if you want to use our fungi from Keto Life and throw it onto some compost, some oats, some straw, put a lid on it in a Tupperware, stick it in a nice, warm, moist place, and grow the Santa's beard. Yeah. That's a very good way to be able to increase your fungal colonization of your compost. And then you can either take that, that moldy compost and you can put it into a compost tea, or you could top dress it. 
But the reason that a lot of people like to do that is because if you look at population of bacteria versus fungi on a timeline, bacteria is a perfect, if the food is there, and the oxygen. To multiply like that, 40, 45 degree curve yeah. versus that mycorrhizal colony, is a colony yeah. is a flat growth curve. You actually have to, it only grows in size. It really doesn't reproduce in number, especially in liquid. You grow the colonies and you grow the number in the compost, put it into the compost tea, and allows all the spores and mycorrhizal hypha to be broken down and distributed from there into your into your um, soil yeah. system. Yeah, I put it a slightly different way. And, and what I what well, first of all, the mycorrhizal fungi are very fragile. So if very you're going to add mycorrhizal fungi to a compost tea, you do it when you finish brewing. Yep. Just before you put the stuff down. How, like, how long would you recommend? How long to Bef keep the before tea? before you use the tea? Oh, what's I, your optimal timing? Oh, I use the tea right away. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'd say. I almost never keep it. I mean, you yep. can put it in the refrigerator and you can keep it up to a couple. Well, of I mean, hours. from the moment that you add a mycorrhizal. Oh, colony. right away. Yeah, right away. That's what as I soon say. as I possibly can. Um, but uh, the, the, the deal is that, that fungus will, during a 24 hour period, will grow, but generally not multiply. Yes. Whereas the bacteria, as you say, they multiply every 15 minutes. You're really doubling the population, you know? And so they outcompete, they outcompete, they outcompete. You grow that fungus ahead of time in your compost, mm -hmm. that will continue to grow in the. Now, it's still fragile. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, but you're right. You, you, the spores and and whatnot will all be available, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it all becomes microbe food because it all has good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know it's interesting that Dr. Elaine is suggesting. And again, I don't mean to be putting words in her mouth because I've only heard this secondhand. Uh, you know, a 0.6 to about a one uh, ratio. Uh, you know, bacteria to fungal uh, uh, FB fungal to bacteria ratio. Um, it's very hard to get a very high fungal ratio, but a one, that ought to be attainable. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, using the right foods, very little molasses, if you want to have more bacteria, more fungal, uh, the fulvic acids uh, would be a good food. Humic acids are a good food because they, they're a good substrate. Um, kelp. Kelp, excellent. Uh, fish hydrolyse, uh, all good foods for fungal. Uh, but don't use too much. Don't go crazy. People go crazy, and, and Kate is absolutely right. Grow it in the compost first. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, li I like to take credit for discovering that. Uh, because, because <laughs> the we, Santa's we, beard? We were, we, were making, we were making teas, and I was sending them in. My, don't tell my wife. I hope she never sees this thing. <laughs> but I was sending in teas to Dr. Elaine back in the day like crazy because I, I didn't know what, what was going when on. When was this? This was back 1996 or seven. I don't know, you know, way back in the day. That's awesome. And, and I was making my own brewers and testing different brewers out. And, every, you know, and I'd get these comments back saying, what did you do to this tea? It's terrible. You know, bad <laughs> brewer I made. You know, I made one with with a, with a fan that literally had paint sticks <laughs> in a bucket. It was a little fan I bought at Woolworths. You know, but anyway, um, uh, you know the 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 ratio of uh, 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 0.6 to one is not that hard to to, to make, especially and, when you have control. Exactly, and that's the point. So you can do that, and you should do it, and you should have it tested, uh, and. By God, grow the finest cannabis you possibly can. That's for sure. And you're going to do it organically with the biggest diversity of microbes yeah. that encourage the entourage right. effect. Right, right, right. right which right. that is a whole thing in of itself that we could talk about. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that, that the Santa Beers thing came as a result of, of my finally uh, uh, talking to a doctor. And I said, how do you grow fungus when you want to see if somebody's sick? You know, how do you how do you grow that fungus? And well, we use potato, we use oatmeal, you know. And I tried all of those things, and it was the dry baby oatmeal that really grew that Sanders beer crazy. <laughs> now it may only be growing the Sanders beer, you know, certain kinds of fungi, right. but at least they're in there, mm -hmm. and at least they're going to be food for the microbes. So it's really exciting stuff. It is. It is. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For, well, I'm going to sure. bump your hand. Boom. <laughs> I'm an old guy, you know, but I really appreciate what you've done and what you're thank continuing you. to do. And I hope you come out with new products all the time. And Thank you. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And please tell your employees, I was floored with their ethics. Awesome. Very thank important. you. So important. It is. Check us out at ketolifesupply.com.